season replays, fantasy drafts, ultimate creative leagues, and what if tournaments. It's Coffee Cup Games with the coach, DKM. Hey, 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 this is Coach DK with Coffee Cup Games. Hope you guys are having a good one. We are continuing in our series called The Originals, which is original games, the first time something happened significant in Major League Baseball history. And in this episode, we're going to be doing the very first World Championship that occurred in Major League Baseball history. Now, this was a precursor to the World Series. This happened between the American Association and the National League. Of course, you may know there was the Union Association, but it was their first year in existence, so they were not included as part of the World Championship. So the very first world championship occurred between the National League's Providence Grays and the American Association's New York Metropolitans. New York's manager Jim Mudry challenged his National League counterpart to a three-game series, a best of three, where each team would put up $1,000. All three games would be played at the Polo Grounds in New York. The Providence Grays, having already won games one and two handedly, wanted to play game three, hoping to be able to get more money out of the tickets from the attendants. They gave New York the opportunity to pick the umpire of their choice, so New York, trying to be creative, decided to pick their game one and game two starter, Tim Keefe, to be the umpire in game three. But unfortunately, with New York not having its best pitcher on the mound, the Providence Grays came out and won 12-2 in that final game. Old Haas Radburn, the Providence Gray starters for all three games, went 22 innings, gave up 11 hits, and no earned runs. So now let's go ahead and let's check out the starting lineups and the starting pitchers for our replay of the original World Championship that occurred in 1884 between the National League and the American Association. On the mound for both teams are going to be two future Hall of Famers for the Providence Grays. They're going to have Charlie Old Haas Radburn. He won 59 games, lost 12. He started 73 games and he had an amazing 1.38 ERA with 441 strikeouts. For the New York Metropolitans, they're going to have Tim Keefe. He won 37 games, lost 17. He had a 2.25 ERA, and he struck out 334 batters and 483 innings. And here are the starting lineups for the 1884 Grays. They're going to have Hines, the center fielder, leading off. Carroll, the left fielder, batting second. Radburn, the pitcher, is going to be batting third. In the cleanup spot, it's going to be the first baseman start. Farrell, the second baseman, is going to be batting fifth. Irwin's going to be batting sixth, playing short. Gilligan, the catcher, is going to be batting seventh. Denny, the third baseman, is going to be batting eighth. And Radford, the right fielder, is going to be batting ninth. For the 1884 Metropolitans, they're going to have Nelson, the shortstop, leading off. Brady, the right fielder, batting second. Esther Brooke, the third baseman, is going to be batting third. Roseman, the center fielder, is batting fourth. Or the first baseman, is batting fifth. Troy, the second baseman, is batting sixth. Ripe Schlagers, the catcher, he's batting seventh. Kennedy, the left fielder, is batting eighth. And Keith, the pitcher, is going to be batting ninth. So there are the lineups now. Let's go into game one from the 1884 World Championship between the American Association's New York Metropolitans and the National League's Providence Grays. But before we jump into the game, first, I'm going to ask you guys to hit that thumbs up and like the video. I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel, trying to get to 200 subscriptions. And lastly, leave any questions, comments, or snide remarks in the comments section down below. <laughs> Here we are at Polo Ground 1 in New York. We are going to be managing the Providence Grays of the National League. Tim Keith is on the mound for the Metropolitans of New York of the American Association. Hines, the center fielder, is up to bat first. He hit 302. He had our team's highest average. He also had three home runs. So what's Hines going to do against Keefe as we go in to the top of the first? Here's the first pitch, and it's going to be a strikeout by Keith to start off the game. And now Carroll is up, the left fielder who at 261. He needs a 1-6. to six. It's going to be a 14, so he had a chance for a single, but unfortunately it's going to be a line out right back to Keith, and that's going to be two down. And now Radburn is up, the pitcher. He's going to hit a line ball right at Orr. That's going to be the third out, so a 1-2-3 inning. And now Radburn, who just made that last out, is going to be on the mound going against the Metropolitans. And Nelson, the short stops up. He had 255. He had one home run. He is going to draw a walk, so a quick early runner on base for New York. And now Brady's up, but Nelson's going to be running. We're going to throw it. Can Gilligan get him out? He's safe. No, Nelson is going to be safe at second. And so he's on base and at second in scoring position with no outs. And Brady, the right fielder, is up. 
and he's going to hit a ground ball to Farrell. Farrell is going to take the easy out of first. Nelson goes to third, so he's going to be only 90 feet away as Estabrook, the third baseman, is up. He led the team with 314 average in 1884. He's their best hitter, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Irwin, who's got a very good range. He's going to have to make a play. He does as he gets the out at first, but unfortunately, New York scores a run and takes a quick early lead, and now with no runners on and two outs, Roseman's up. The center fielder is going to hit a ground ball to Denny at third. That's going to be the third out. But New York does get a run in the first inning. They lead this one one to nil. Here is Start leading us off the first baseman for the Providence Grays, who hit 276, is up to bat. And he is going to hit a fly ball to Kennedy, who does not have very good range. This one's down the line. Kennedy's going to have to make a play. He cannot get to it. And that one's going to go all the way to the wall. Kennedy's going to throw it to Estabrook at third and hold Start, who is standing at second. So a leadoff double for us. And now Farrell is up to a 217, a very bad average. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to bunt here, trying to advance the runner. 92% chance of successful bunt, and it will work as Orr charges that one, throws to Detroit, who was covering first base. That's going to take the easy out, and start now is on third with Irwin up to bat the shortstop, who at 240. Seems to be pretty average for the team, and he's going to get a single as he has a ground ball right up the middle. Troy and Nelson, the second shortstop, cannot get to it, so that's going to be a tying run as Irwin Gets on base, and we're going to try to see if we can steal here. Irwin's trying to get a lead. He's got an 80% chance he can get a lead. He does not get a good lead. He does have a 55% chance. We're not going to risk it early on. Keith only has a plus one arm. Ripe Schlager, the catcher, has a plus one arm. So here's Gilligan. He's up the bat, and he's going to be strike out. As that is going to be Keefe's second strikeout in two innings. And now Denny's up the third baseman. He's going to be strikeout. So back-to-back -back strikeouts by Keefe to end the top of the second. We go into the bottom of the second with New York up to bat. The game tied at one apiece. Radburn going against Orr. And Orr needs a 1-19. to And he's going to get a 4. So that's going to be good enough for a single. A very high percentage for Orr to get on base. And again, New York has a leadoff man on base, and Troy is up to bat. He's going to hit a fly ball to center field to Hines. Hines is going to have to make a play. It's pretty deep. Orr is tagging up, but nope, he's not going to be able to advance. So that's going to be one down. Orr still on first, and now Ripe Schlager's up. The catcher hit 240. He's going to try hit and run. It's going to be a ground ball to Farrell at second base, who's got very good range. But he gets there a little bit late. He throws it to first. <laughs> He cannot get to it. It's going to be in the dirt. So not only was Reipschlager able to beat out the throw, but then the bad throw allowed Reipschlager to go to second as it gets by the first baseman on the throw. And now they have runners on second and third with one out. And Kennedy's up who hit 190, but a great chance here with two runners in scoring positions, only one out. He's going to hit a ground ball to Farrell. Farrell's going to take the easy out of first. They are going to score a run. Don't! Ripe Schleier goes to third. Now they got their lead back and lead 2-1. to one. And now Keith, the pitcher's up. He had 238 with three home runs. He's going to draw a walk. So runners on the corners. Radburn seems to be struggling early on. And now Nelson's up. Nelson's going to hit a ground ball to start. Start gets this one, picks it up, throws it to Radburn, covering first base. That's going to end the inning. And unfortunately for us, New York has gotten a run in each of the first two innings. And they lead this one 2-1 to one as we go into the top of the third. Radford, the right fielder, our number nine hitter, who at 197 is up to bat. He's going to hit a ground ball to Nelson and short. That's going to be an easy out. That's one down. And now here is Hines. Hines is going to strike out. So another strikeout for Tim Keefe. Keefe has four strikeouts so far. Carroll's up the bat. He's going to hit a line ball right at Nelson. Nelson has to take a few steps to his left. But that's going to end the inning. Another one, two, three innings. We go into the bottom of the third. Here is Brady, the right fielder. He had 252. He is going to pop this one up. Denny calls off the rest of the infield. He takes this one in. That's going to be one down as the third baseman pulls that in. Now Esther Brooks up. He's 0 for 1. He needs a 1 to 7 for a single. And unfortunately, it is going to be a 7. So it will be a hit up the middle. And Esther Brooks on first. Here's Roseman. Roseman's up the bat. Esther Brooks trying to get a lead. He cannot. So here's the pitch, and it's going to be a ground ball to Irwin. Irwin, whoopsies, again with an air as he cannot pull this one in. Esther Pro gets the second, Roseman gets the first. So a second air by Irwin. Ugh. Idiot. 
and that's now going to allow runners on first and second with one down or is up. They are going to try to steal here. Shocking. They need a one to seven to be able to steal. That's only a 35% chance. We're obviously going to throw two third base to Denny to not try to throw out Estherbrook. Here's the throw. He's out. And he is going to be pegged at third for the second out. And now Orr back up the bat. He singled the last time. He's going to hit another single as he hits this one over the third baseman. That's going to be to Carroll. Carroll is a plus two arm. Roseman's got pretty good speed. He can score on a 90% chance if we want to throw and test it. Or we can stop the other runners from advancing. So we're going to keep Orr at first base. Let the run score. Disappointed! As now, that's going to keep Orr from being in scoring position. So they get another run. And now Troy is up. Troy is up the bat, but Orr is running. Here's the throw. And Orr is going to be safe. Another error as Gilligan has a wild throw. Orr now goes the third. So our third error in this game. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Troy up the bat, and he's going to fly ball to center field. Hines is going to come up, and he's going to be able to take that one in. So we get out of the inning. But again, New York gets another run. At the end of three innings, New York Metropolitans lead this one 3-1 to one over the Providence Grays. The Grays have one run on two hits. They've committed three crucial errors. And New York has three runs on four hits and has yet to commit an error. Unlike in 1884 where the Providence Grays won this one, it looks like New York is definitely in the driver's seat as we go into the top of the fourth. Our pitcher, Old Haas, Charlie Radburn's up. He hit 230. He did line out earlier in the first inning. He's going to line out again this one to Troy, and that's going to be one down, and now Start is up. He's going to hit a line ball to Orr, so that's going to be two down, and now Farrell, the second baseman, is up, and he's going to hit a ground ball to Estherbrook, so that's going to be a one, two, three inning as we go into the bottom of the fourth. Here's Reipschlager. He had a single the last time. He's going to hit a ground ball to Start. Start pulls that one in, goes over and tags the bag himself, unassisted out there, so that's going to be one down, and here's Kennedy. Kennedy's going to hit a ground ball to Irwin at short. And that's going to be two down, and now the pitcher keeps up. He walked his first at bat. He's going to hit another ground ball right at Irwin. Irwin scoops this one up, throws it over to first to start, and that's going to be a one, two, three inning as we go in to the top of the fifth. Here's Keefe on the mound going against Irwin. He has one of our two hits. This time he's going to be strikeout. The fifth strikeout for Keefe as he has as many strikeouts as there are innings so far. And now Gilligan's up the catcher. He struck out his first at bat, and he's going to be strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Keefe, and now Denny's up. And Denny's going to hit a ground ball. At least he gets a bat on the ball, but it's going to go right to the third baseman. Estherbrook, who throws this one to first for a 1-2-3 inning, and we go into the bottom of the fifth. Here's Nelson. He's 0-1. for 1. He did walk. He's going to hit a ground ball to first. Starts going to have to make a play. He gets there. He throws it to first to Radburn, who's covering but it was a throw that was too high. And that one's going to allow Nelson to go to seconds to the fourth air by the Providence Grays. What are you doing? As they have a runner in scoring position with no outs and Brady is up and Brady needs a one for a triple. The rest is a single. It's going to go into right field. It will be easily a single. That is going to score Nelson from second base. Bruh. And now they add another run. So it's four to one. Brady's on first. Esther Brooks up. They're trying to get a lead. Brady cannot. Esther Brook is going to hit a ground ball to Irwin. He's going to toss it to Farrell. He's going to toss it over start for a 6-4-3 double play. And now Roseman's up with two down. And Roseman's going to hit a ground ball to Farrell. Farrell is able to make a play. No, he cannot. Another error. Farrell has to run toward the middle of the infield. He jumps on one foot. Roseman was too fast for the throw. But another throw too high as he now goes to second base. Our fifth air in five innings. Who's coaching this ball club? And now Orr is up. He's two for two. He's going to hit a fly ball to center field. Luckily for us, that's going to be an easy out. So that will end the inning. But again, New York gets a run on horrible defense by the Providence Grays. Providence Grays, as you may know, is the team that Sportsman Z Bob Zolke uses for his leagues. If he's watching this one, I'm sure he's not happy with the performance so far by the Providence Grays. But can we come back? We only have two hits so far. We're going into the top of the six. Here's Radford, our number nine hitter. He's going to hit a ground ball to Estherbrook. He doesn't have the best range. Whoopsies. 
that he's going to make an error. So the first error by the Metropolitans, and we get a leadoff man on base. We're going to try to see if we can steal here. He has a 1-17 to chance. If he can get a good lead, he does not. So it's going to be a 50% chance. We're going to keep him there. Hines, the leadoff man's up. He hit 302 with three home runs. He's going to hit a ground ball to Esterbrook again. Esterbrook gets the ball. He throws it to Troy at second. But it's going to go into the outfield. So Radford goes to third. And Hines now ends up on second on the throwing air. As Esterbrook, in his quickness, was not able to make a good throw. And so we got runners in scoring position. Carroll up the bat. He had 261 with three home runs. We could use a home run right now. Unfortunately, he's going to hit a ground ball to Troy. Troy's going to take the easy out at first. We do score a run. As they get the easy out, Hines now is on third. So with one down, here's Charlie Old Haas Radburn, future Hall of Famer. He hit 230. He did have a home run back in 1884. He's going to hit a fly ball into left field. Kennedy's going to trail to his left. He's going to scoop this one in. He does not have a very good arm. Hines is very fast, so he's got a 95% chance to score. We're going to tag up. We're going to send him. Here's going to be the throw. He's safe. It's going to be a five. So we beat the throw at home plate, and we are now within one run. So with two outs, the inning's not over. Start is up. He had a double earlier in the second inning. He's going to ground ball to Troy. Whoopsies. That's going to be an error as Troy muffs that one. And now Start is able to get on. To first base. So this inning is not over. Is now New York's defensive woes are helping us here. Farrell up the bat. He is one for two. He did have a sacrifice bunt. He's going to hit a line ball right to Esterbrook. That's going to end the inning, but we get two runs and close the gap to four to three as we go into the bottom of the six. Here's Troy. The second baseman hit 264. He's going to lead off hitting a single into left field. So he's on base. Another leadoff man for New York. And here's Reipschlager. Ripe Schlager is going to hit a fly ball to center field. Hines has very good range. His range is a one. And so he is going to have to make a play. He will. And he gets there. And so that's going to be one down as Troy stays on first base. He's going to try to steal. Here's the throw. He needs a one to 11. He's out. It's going to be a 17. So Gilligan throws him out at second base as the aggressive play by New York backfires there. That's going to be two down. And now Kennedy's up. He's 0 for 2. He's going to hit a ground ball to start at first. He's going to have to make a play. Give me that. He does as he dives down the line. He throws it to Radburn, covering first base, and they just get the out at first for the third out. So after six innings, Providence comes back. They have three runs on only three hits, but they've committed five crucial errors. New York has four runs on eight hits, and they have committed three errors that have come back to hurt them as well. We get ready to enter into the final three innings of this game. We are in the top of the seventh. Irwin is up. The shortstop, he hit 240. He did have two home runs. He's going to be strikeout. The seventh strikeout by Keefe. Impressive. So there's one down. Gilligan's up. He is going to hit a ground ball to Orr at first base. Orr has to cover the line. He picks this one up. He takes to the bag himself. That's going to be an out. And now Denny, the third baseman, is up to a 246. Let our team home runs. But he's going to hit a line ball right at Troy at second. That's going to be a one, two, three innings. We go into the bottom of the seventh. Keefe's the pitcher's up. The number nine hitter, he had 238. He did have three home runs in 1884. And he's going to pop one up. To Irwin, a high towering shot. Irwin backs up a short, goes to the back of the infield, and that's going to be one down. Now Nelson's up. He has scored twice in this game. He's going to hit a ground ball to start. He has to make a play start off of a weird bounce, snags that one, and he's able to toss to the Radburn covering first. So that's going to be two down. And now Brady is up, and Brady's going to hit a hard rocket shot right at Irwin at short. Irwin takes that one in. So a one, two, three inning as we go in. To the top of the eighth, Radford, our number nine hitter, is going to lead us off. He's over two. He scored a run, and he's going to be strikeout. Another strikeout for Keefe, his eighth. Here is Hines. He's one for three. He scored a run. He's going to get a walk, so he's able to get on base. He's got really good speed, and we're going to try to see if he can get a good jump here. Dave! He dives back as they try to pick him off. He still has a 60% chance to steal. So we're going to try to steal. We're going to roll our dice here. Uh -huh. See if Heinz can get a steal. So 1 to 12 is what we need for a successful steal. Anything else he's going to be thrown out is 1 to 12. Dave! 
and it's going to be a nine. So Hines steals second base, and Carroll is up the bat, who at 261, the switch hitting left fielder, did have three home runs. He is 0 for 3 today, but we're going to go ahead and let him hit as he is our number two hitter. He's going to hit a ground ball to Estherbrook. Estherbrook's going to check on Hines, keep Hines at second. He's going to throw it to first, so that's going to be two down, and now Radburn is up. Radburn, the pitcher, hit 230. He has a chance here. He's going to hit a ground ball to Nelson. You're a stupid head. That's going to be the third out as we leave a runner in scoring position with two chances to be able to knock him in. We did not, so we go into the bottom of the eighth. Here is Estherbrook. He's one for three. He's going to hit a fly ball opposite field to Radford, Radford's got pretty good range, and he is going to have to make a play, and he will as he backs up a few, makes a nice catch, one down, and now Roseman's up. He's one for three, and he needs a one to six for a home run. This one's going all the way back to the wall. Anything else is not going to be out of the park, and it's going to be a 16. So Carroll goes back to the warning track and pulls this one in. Awesome! Because that was pretty dangerous, but it stays inside the fence of the polo grounds. And so that will be two down. And now Orr, who's two for three, he's up. He's going to get his third hit as he is a line drive into left field. So with two outs, he is on base. Radburn now going against Troy. Troy is one for three, and he's going to be struck out. So a strikeout for Radburn to end the inning as we go into the top of the ninth. We have our cleanup man start, our first baseman leading off. We are down to our last three outs to see if we can extend this game. And now start. Here we go. He is one for three. He's been on base with an air, and he's going to get on base to lead us off. So he gets on base, and he is going to be at first. Farrell is up. He at 217. He is able to make good bunch. Let's see if we can get a stolen base. I know we're taking some high risk here. See if we can get a good lead. He cannot. So he's got a 1 to 11, 55% chance. And we're going to see if we can get a successful bunt here. He bunts it, and it's a successful bunt. The runner in scoring position, Irwin, is up. He had 240. He had two home runs. He is one for three today. He has gotten a single back in the second, which was an RBI single. And then since then, he's been struck out twice. Two of Keefe's eight strikeouts. Here's the pitch. He's going to hit a ground ball to Estherbrook. Estherbrook's going to check on start. He's going to throw it out to Orr at first. So that's going to be two down. So we are down to our possible last batter as Gilligan, the catcher, is up. He's been struck out twice. He's grounded out. He's 0 for 3. Here's the pitch. And he's going to hit a ground ball to Orr. Orr's going to have to make a play. Whoopsie. And Orr does not make a play. He juggles this one. He cannot pick it up in time as Gilligan's able to get the first. And so an air on Orr keeps the inning alive. Hallelujah. Start is now on third, 90 feet away from tying this one up. Denny is up. He had six home runs. He led our team with six home runs. He has one of our highest averages with 252. He is 0 for 3. We really could use the column that we need. It is going to be a five. It's going to be a ground ball to Orr. He's going to have to make another play. And he does not. He again makes back-to-back airs. So back-to-back airs on Orr as he cannot handle this one. And that allows Gilligan to take second and start scores from third. Yahoo! As we have runners on first and second tie this one up. And now Radford's up. He only hit 201. He's 0 for 3 today. To get on base on an air. And he's going to hit a fly ball to center field. This one's pretty shallow, but Roseman's able to get there. Looks like he has no problem. That is going to end the inning. So two crucial errors by Orr, the first baseman, has given us the opportunity to tie this one up as we now go into the bottom of the ninth, the 4-4 game. Reipschlager is going to lead him off. The number seven hitter, the catcher, is hitting 240. He is one for three today. And he's going to hit a fly ball as he pulls this one in the left field to Carroll. Carroll is able to pull that one in. So that's going to be routine out, one down. Here's Kennedy, and he's going to be strikeout. Only the second strikeout for Charlie Radburn. And now Keith, the pitcher's up. He's over two. He did get on base with a walk. He's going to hit a fly ball opposite direction to Radford and right. And that's going to be a one, two, three inning. As we are now going to go into extra innings in game one of the world championship from 1884 between the National League Providence Grays and the American Association's New York Metropolitans. Hines, our leadoff man, is going to lead us off. The center fielder hit 302. He's been struck out twice. He got on base on a single and got on base with a walk. 
He has scored one run. He's going to hit the ball into right field to Brady. That's going to be one down. So one off, and then Carroll's up. He's 0 for 4, not having a good game. He's going to hit the ball to Brady again. Brady's going to have to make a play. He's got pretty good range. Can he get there? Give me that! A great play by Brady. An amazing highlight film play. As that's going to be two down, and now Radburn, Charlie Radburn's up the pitcher. He's going to hit a fly ball to Roseman. Roseman's going to have to make a play. Roseman's charging this one in. Hits off of the heel of his glove as he's not able to pull this one in. That's going to be an error. So Radburn is on first. And now Start is up. Start is one for three with a double. He's going to pull this one in the right field, but it's going to be easily right at Brady and right. So that's going to be the third out. So we go into the bottom of the 10th with a score still tied at four apiece. Here's Nelson. He's one for three. He needs a one to five for a single. It's going to be a three. So unfortunately for us, that's going to be a single to lead off the inning. So here's Brady. He's one for four. They're trying to get a lead with Nelson. He cannot. Brady's going to have to hit. He's going to hit a ground ball. Irwin's going to toss it to Farrell. Farrell's going to throw it over to first, but it's not going to be in time. But we do get the out at second, the force out. So it's a fielder's choice. Brady now is on first with one down and Estherbrook's up. Brady cannot get a good lead. Estherbrook is going to be strikeout. Third strikeout for Old Haas Radburn. And now Roseman's up. He's one for three. He needs a one to four for a double. It's going to be a seven. So luckily for us, that's going to keep Brady from scoring as he is on third, though. And Roseman's on first. So a runner on third. And now Orr is coming up. He is three for four with three singles. Sheesh. He hit 363. I really don't want to go against him. So we're going to intentionally walk him as really the only run that matters is the one on third. I'd rather go against Troy, who at 245. We just want to stay away from column number two. And unfortunately, it is column number two. And he needed a one to six for a double. It's going to be a 19. So it's good enough for a single. That is going to score the winning run. Oh, so that's going to end the game as New York wins this one in the bottom of the 10th as Troy steps up with the bases loaded, two outs, and gets a single to win this one. So New York is the victor as they get five runs on 12 hits. They committed six errors that were absolutely deadly for their efforts. But unfortunately for us, we got lucky to get what we got. We had four runs. We only had three hits as Tim Keefe was shutting down our bats. Unfortunately, the New York defense helped us out with five errors. But at the end of the day, New York won this one five to four and take game one in this replay. And there you are, our replay of Game 1 from the inaugural World Championship that occurred in 1884 between the National League's Providence Grays and the American Association's New York Metropolitans. Originally, the Providence Grays won Game 1, ended up sweeping the Metropolitans in three games, but in our replay... New York ended up showing up with Tim Keefe and shutting us pretty much down on the bats as he only allowed three hits, but we did score four runs off of a lot of miscues by the Metropolitan's defense, but unfortunately, our defensive woes were much more, and we gave up not only 12 hits, but a whole lot more errors that were more crucial. But as you know, in many of the 19th century games, defensive struggles were part of the game, and obviously, it came to hurt us the most. I hope you guys enjoyed this replay of Game 1 of the 1884. Very first world championship that occurred in Major League Baseball history. Until next time, this is Coach DK. Have a good one. Bye.